And now, another exciting episode in the adventures of Outdoor Journal Radio. That is correct. Outdoor Journal Radio, thanks for joining us once again. I'm Angela Viola. He is Peter Bowman. Hi there. We have Bova, we have Nick, and we have... Well, we had Nick. Yeah, so he's don't, in don't, give Nick, uh, don't give he's him in any uh, accolades here, okay? He's, oh, don't give him more than he's worth? Well, um, look at him. He's probably in the uh, shitter now yeah. or something. Like, where, where is he? He's, what is with your language, by the way? Right off the start. I was, just, the about pooper, to, the I was just about to talk about uh, Dean he, Taylor. Come what on language? Now. He beat me. Nobody even knows what I said. Oh. oh he already beat, you beat me. Oh, all right. right? Just, uh, just wondering. Almost today. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Well, that's all about it. It's just I get carried away. When I know a guy's know in the you. shitter for an hour <laughs> on hydro time, that's not fun. It's not good for you <laughs> on or hydro me or, time. Yeah, yeah. That's what I call it hydro time. <laughs> that's where I used to work you, all my you, years. So. You experienced that a little uh, bit. Yes, did you? You call, we used to just call it that on hydro oh time. On God. work hours, we called it hydro How time. How long did you work for Ontario Hydro? I, I got laid off with 17 years seniority, but I had, I had another. At least a year and a half on top of that, which I had lost uh, on my first layoff. So close to 20. How do you lose you know? that? How does one lose in a layoff? You lose seniority. seniority. You just, uh, um, they work on a, I don't know, I think it was a, God, I have to remember that. So I was an apprentice still because it was only about a year and a half in. And it's a five year, basically a five year apprenticeship for electrical. And I got laid off, and it was, I think, after six months. If you were off more than six months, you lost your seniority. I think it was. They had, ah, a, they had a system in, the, in place so that if you got back in beforehand, you, you carried on your seniority, sort of thing like that. Because then I think what would happen, I think guys were quitting. Guys would quit for a year or two and then come back and say, yeah, I still so, got 20 years or whatever. No, right. no, no, no. You right. know what I mean? You can't Well, that would that. make sense. Yeah. It's accumulative. Yeah. Just because I took off for four or five years. Yeah, but they're doing it on purpose. They're playing the game. You know what I mean? So you're saying, no, no, you didn't. There's no games being played here today. You're so that it. would pretty much make you an old fart. I'm trying to do the math. So you have almost... <laughs> 20 years. Have I ever said I was a young fart? Well, sometimes you allude to... No, 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 no. Other people allude to it, that I am young. I don't ever allude to not being old. Oh. And trust me, my old arse right now, it feels old. My whole body feels old right now. I fish for a day and I got to heal for three, you know? (laughs) (laughs) A lot of things that... You would do for a day. Uh, you used to be able to shake it off and oh god, right yeah, back, right hell yeah, hell yeah. Anyways, the old lower back. She's uh, old. Never mind that. We yeah. have a wonderful program today. Uh, joining us a little later on is our good friend uh, Stephen Tate. He of uh, Maple Leaf Marine fan. Uh, Come on now, uh, Maple Leaf Marinas. I guess it is. Yes, yes, um, correct. Fame. Um, big big operation. They own oh my god twenty some odd marinas across Unreal. the province. So. He's yeah. going to be here. He's our, he's our, for those of you maybe not familiar with him, he is our, when we need answers for marine stuff, boats, yeah. motors, all that stuff. He's our boat Steve dude. Steve is our guy. Yeah. Uh, he'd been. And he knows his stuff. He has he an answer for stuff. everything. So if he doesn't, he'll if get he, it for us. If he doesn't, he'll make it up and we still believe it. <laughs> It's still good. See, Sounds good. No, see, no. I said he'll get it for us. You throw him under the bus saying he'll make it up. So sorry, Steve. When you come on here, hopefully that you... It's you know. the delivery that's important. You know, you got to make people... No, believe. it's not the delivery that's no? important. It's the real truth to the matter that's okay. important. Always, right. my friend. All Always. Right. Well, here's some truth for you. If you were to go to fishingcanada.com <laughs> right now... <laughs> There's a delivery okay. and truth together right there, right? Yes. Yeah. If you were to go there right now, you would see that you could win yourself a bevy of prizes, all at no charge. All you have to do is just take whatever few seconds it takes to... How does Fishing Canada afford that? How can they do that? That's a great... Nobody's ever asked them that. We should bring them on here. and Maybe they could answer that I'd question. I'd like to know that. How they could give away a, a Garmin LiveScope uh, system. Hell, like never that. mind just that. A- Boat motor trailers. Yeah, how can that's, they, how that's can they in the past. Away? They got to get that back going. Can you get that it's going coming. again? We got, we got. Okay, the, now you're Dean, talking. Okay. Dean, we have that coming. Do we not? Yeah, I'm working on it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, okay. We but bu- for now, I'm just talking about the uh, the uh, you know the ongoing. Did you get the feeling that we were interrupting Dean there for someone? I just asked him to talk. Like, yes, no, I didn't. I wasn't he's watching. Got a bit of attitude gonna... today. <laughs> Dean, <laughs> I've been maybe. hearing this all morning. I thought I was in a good mood today. He's maybe Dean's getting on to you a little bit. Maybe Dean's finally saying, "Okay, Viola." Enough of this attitude. bullshit. Let's get on with the program. All right. All right. 
He's got, I'm just marking it down. Yeah, okay. I've been having a great morning. I don't know. Have what you? About. Yeah. Yeah. He he yeah. he was fired up this oh, morning. Yeah. I was talking to Dean earlier about other that subject matters that we might not want to talk about. Can I about talk with. about my but morning? I'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you told me you were fi- you talk about fired up. That guy that you were talking to today was fired up. Son. Oh my God! I had a morning this morning. Not to take away from your morning, Dean. I, that's all right. That's I, right. But this one, this one was just epic. I went to, yes, I do these things. I went to uh, the uh, bureau where you get your uh, license renewed. License bureau, maybe. Yeah, Something sure. like that. Because uh, there's different yes, names I do for these it things? all across. What do you think? You have people do that? Is, well, is people no, but that? you would go online normally to do this, right? You, this is an online thing. But for whatever oh. reason, uh, I anyways, I was there to get this thing renewed this morning. And, of course... Every time you go to one of these places, there's a lineup oh, like halfway down the block and around it. the back. Like, hate what is? It. Hate it every time. You know, every time. You know, if it was any other business, <laughs> if it was a regular business, and every single day that that business opens up, there's a line of people a mile and a half long. Eventually, the business owner, the entrepreneur, would say, "Hey, you know what? We got to fix that." We got to make sure that we don't have a line. So obviously we need to bring in more people. We need to maybe open up a little earlier. Maybe we need to stay open a little later and we can accommodate all these folks who want to do business with us, but not government agencies. Have you noticed that? Dougie Ford, your buddy Dougie, he has to get on it, right? He's the, he's the business owner right now. He's the boss. Government agencies. God forbid, should they go out of their way, even in an iota, to, to so take to away some the of the pain happy. and anguish that's yeah. sitting in that lineup. But every day, and this has been going on since I was a kid, nothing has changed. Yeah. But anyways. Anyways. I don't so wanna, you had a bad experience there? Or no, a good experience? I had a good experience ah, there. So, okay. well, so rare. fortunately, you know, normally you, you bop around for an hour and a half, sometimes two hours. Really? Oh, two yeah. Hours. Today was oh, an hour. Man. Today was quick. It was an hour. Yeah, that's considered in and out. But anyways, <laughs> this gentleman behind me, he, he, st- he start, started out by him murmuring to himself. And then... Um, Seeking attention, probably. He, right? probably, probably, well, he wasn't sure he was in the right line. So first thing he went, he walked right in front of me and the rest, the other, I don't know how many people in front of me, yeah, yeah. right to the counter. One of those and, guys, okay. And we all yeah. said, hey, 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 whoa, 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 Here's whoa. Is it yeah? So I was... He comes back and he says, oh, sorry about that. Um, I just wanted to make sure I was in the right place. That's good. Okay, you know, that's fine. Then. That's, that's good. That's and I thought fine. that was it. Great. You yep. know, conversation's yep. over. For the next hour and 10 minutes, <laughs> this guy told me his life story. <laughs> it, but nonstop. Oh, God. Non, not a break. Not a period at the end of a sentence. Not a paragraph. Nothing. It was just, a, it was, it was fascinating. I and the subject matter, unfortunately, you can't say, uh, uh, well, you can say a little but, bit. You well, can yeah, he had been, there had been a home uh, a invasion victim. or whatever yeah, a victim of a home invasion. Yeah. yeah. And somebody broke into his house and uh, they ended up clobbering him with a baseball bat. And you said he looked the part, right? It, he looked oh, the part? Oh, he was a mess. He <laughs> was a mess. He was an absolute mess. Poor guy. He looked like he just went to five rounds with the <laughs> UFC champion. Oh, my Anyways, God. And so they broke in and, and, and beat him with a bat. And it was just a very sad story, but, but he made it interesting. And entertaining. He, <laughs> it, it turns out that one of his buddies was the ringleader for the people who broke in. And it was, it was wow. awful. But from there, he went on to uh, a bar that he owned. From there, he went on to a motorcycle club that he used to hang out with. <laughs> and Alice Cooper was involved in the conversation. Oh, I mean, it was God. just bizarre. Oh, that's great. Wonderful. My only regret is I didn't get his name. I didn't turn my my phone on and 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 tape him because it was priceless. That would have been a great podcast right there. But, just, we could have just let it roll. But, oh, you would have. But the hour went by just like that. Next That's, thing I know, it's my turn, and I'm up, and I get my stuff done, and I'm off. <laughs> See you later, buddy. That was good. Uh, and that happens periodically where, you know, in our case, we people generally that – is due to somebody recognizing us. I had, I had a guy last night who recognized me and, and I spent way too much time with him too. But uh, in this case, this guy, he had no had idea, no you were, right? idea <laughs> at all. I love it. Zero. I love 
no. So there was no value yeah. in in talking to me. I could have been. I was. I was just anybody to him. And he just opened his soul up, and it was magic. Anyway, nice. That's nice. Enough for that. It's entertaining for your morning, right there. Good uh, was the, it was the highlight of my day oh so my far. God. This program, we'll see. We'll see. How you know, this, uh, okay, just very quickly for the audience yeah. of all of all the talk. This you can say. Tell the audience what he was talking about his dog. His, that's the best part of it this all. Was the best. So he got clobbered in the head. He got some brain damage, and his memory. He has tremendous memory loss. And obviously, there's other things there, too, that, that they're not working properly. So he says, yeah, he says, I was here an hour ago. I, and unfortunately, I had to go home because because I forgot my wallet, of all things. How the hell, he says, how the hell do you forget your wallet when you got to go to a place where they're going to ask you for your wallet because you got your license and stuff? And he said, Anyways, anyway, I went home, and, um, and I had already taken the dog out for a walk before I left this morning, and I told my dog that I'm going to be a while because I'm going to the motor vehicle place because you know what it's like there. And he, you know, I said, anyways, I'm going to take you out for a walk now, do your business because I'm going to probably be gone for three, four hours. God only knows how long it's going to take me. Well, I go back home because I forget my wallet and the dog saying, what the hell are you doing back? He said, I thought you were gone for a few. So I had to explain to him that I forgot my wallet. Oh my God. That's, that's awesome. the conversation. Type that is of conversation awesome. I, I love that. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing! And he uh, was dead serious. Yeah. Like there was yeah. not him and his dog were talking. Yeah, they were literally. He we're talking, talking to, to his each dog. Other. His dog was wondering how come how come you're back that's already? That's amazing. <laughs> I love it. I love that stuff. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, anyways, uh, what do we got cooking here? Uh, listener feedback. Or yes, we got, let's we, get uh, let's get to that. We're, listener feedback from Silly Gold via Apple Podcasts. Good show. Uh, I would love to hear more about unique variants of fish. What does that mean? So I asked Dean and I had a conversation about that earlier, and I guess we're thinking that maybe there's like a subspecies or or a something wrong anomaly with fish maybe. Yeah, or well, we like, talked about that on a recent episode, like that f- new Florida strain of bass. We've talked about them ah. discovering a new strain of uh, rainbow right. before, so maybe he likes stories yeah, like that. That's what we're thinking, yeah. anyways. I mean, well, let's there, make well, let's make some up. Yeah, I think we should make some. <laughs> let's make some. Silly, you'd like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, oh my God, yeah. Hell yeah, I'm some, a, I'm uh, into yeah. that. Yeah, there's I the mean we... the mean mouth bass. Remember that one, Ange? You remember that one? The mean mouth. Mean mouth. I think what? it's a cross between a small mouth and a spot. I think. Where was that? Uh... They're all in the U.S. They're they're, yeah. they're still out there right now. That's another one. That's that maybe that's what he's talking about. Maybe. Variants. Well. Splake, well, we'll you know? we'll try and do more variant stuff uh, for you, silly gold. If we can find it, if we know what we're talking about, right? Well, you'd have to. You'd have yeah. to be half intelligent. Have to be half intelligent. I'd have to listen to another podcast for that. My I buddy, think. I should have asked my buddy. Yeah, he today. Got a he variant. Had, I'll bet you he had some variants. He had variants and a little bit of. He made it, it sounds like he did a few variants this <laughs> morning me, before. He told me he got busted for. Uh, I don't. I, he would just roll into these. Eh? It was like there was no, like not, eh. He said, "Yeah, I, 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 I yeah, I got busted uh, drinking and." And, and 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 dope and stuff. I, yeah, and it was fine. It was all good. But then I went. I, went, I was. I was. I wanted to go and visit my buddy in Buffalo one time, and then he had stopped me at the border because <laughs> this thing popped up. And and apparently, you know, if you have a a drug uh, 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 charge on your record, you can't go into the U.S. Apparently, <laughs> but you can go. And sure, they can come up to Canada. And he's going on about this. He's right. He said, I went down. I got fired. Got tired. I wanted to go across the border so um I, there's a place there where you can go down there and <laughs> and they were like he's telling me he's and it costs 18 1800 bucks us but i didn't Jeez. have it so i got dad my dad lent it to me and i good luck getting that back dad <laughs> that's <what he's>, <laughs> good luck getting that back oh my god we meanwhile this guy, this guy is 72 years old by the oh way he told me he was god. 72 but anyways Bizarre, bizarre world I was in for an hour. It was great. That's a variant right there. Makes me sure. look normal. <laughs> oh, 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 boy. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, fishcan.com. If you go to uh, you, the... You forgot po- the podcast network. That's where I'm going. Oh, okay. If you go there, uh, the podcast network highlights, I'm assuming. Or we just... Or or, or these have no connection with, with that name. You can throw it there. Everything's sure. on the website. I yeah. like... Well, that's why I like the connect. Yeah, that's where everything yeah. is. Right? Yeah. So, that's a good place to send people. Well, thank you, Dean. Thank you. Okay, sorry about uh, that. Uh, anyway, that's, my bad. He was throwing that. My know fault, what OG. Going on. That guy fried my brain today. <laughs> uh, the podcast network highlight this uh, 
a week is uh, Under the Canopy with her good friend Jerry O. Jerry O. He was in this morning. We Jerry saw him this o. morning. Yeah. Jerry O's in every morning. Three times. He came in three times today. <laughs> three times. All in one shot. Back out of the car, back in by Dean. It was hilarious. Yes, it was yeah. like, it would just keep going back and forth. Episode uh, th- uh, 37 is being highlighted. It's uh, wow. Survivor Man's Mentor with David Arema. 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 I guess. Apparently, uh, he mentored Survivor Man. I don't know. Wow. Survival expert David uh, Arama. I got a picture of Survivor Man the other day from my friend uh, Sean Gleason. He's down at the marina, and he goes, sends this picture of him and Les Stroud together. And he said, "Uh, guess who I'm with today? I said, well, I I know who that is, uh, obviously. And Les does, uh, I think he told us before, he does some musical uh, uh, appearances as well as uh, he's a musician. He was in a band before the show, he told us. Right. Like, oh, So now right. he's back And what was he doing at Whitby? They were playing down the Whitby Harbor. He had, he had a gig at the Whitby no. Harbor. No. Les you. Stroud Les was Str- playing. <laughs> so I heard. I just Sean said. He saw Sean, he was driving in one of his cars, and the guy and Les come over and said, wow, nice car. And Sean said, hey, I know. You know, just, okay, we do selfies. And they did all that stuff. <laughs> Crazy world. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. But anyways, uh, everything you ever wanted to know about uh, Survivor Man's uh, mentor, uh, David uh, Arama, on uh, Under the Canopy. Got to know what he's talking about, right? If he taught well, the Survivor I would think Man. If he taught, uh, if he taught less yeah. how to survive, I mean, Hell holy yeah. smokes. Okay. Uh, in the news, Mr. Bowman. In the news. Can fish grow after they die? So... So this all started at the Sportsman Show. We were, I, probably a lot of you people have listened to the podcasts that we've had all, from all our network people. And this guy came over to the, to the booth one day, and he was starting to talk about different things. He had, I can't remember his first subject, but then he got onto this subject about that. He says, you know what, you guys need to, need to know something here. I got to tell you something about that. He says, when fish die, they actually grow. <laughs> and I said, What? He says, no, they grow. They grow a little bit. They stretch. I says, what do you mean they stretch? How do they really get into this whole cover? And he was 100% positive that they grow. So, of course, we go back and we say, well, we have a, a bevy of uh, experts we could probably ask. And in our fish talk with the doc, we're now incorporating that into the website, by the way, on fishingcanada.com. There'll be a little written portion of it, too. So we said that to, to Dr. Stephen Cook. And he said, it's more likely that when a fish dies, it shrinks. Well, and we yeah. have science on that. Well, that makes well, yeah. sense, right? Well, things are dead. It is. Right. There are some stories about fish getting longer while held in, held in live wells with some reference uh, to, in a study to, on, to Ohio DNR. But he says, that, you know, that, so they may grow in a live well, but up to maybe six millimeters, you, uh, warm water, stuff like that. that would, but it doesn't make any sense. It makes, it makes zero sense. Anyways, there are studies. Uh, we published them. They're on fishingcanada.com in the news section if you want a more a definitive. Uh, this guy was great. He, I, oh, I got to remember the other one. He too. sounds like my guy this morning in the yeah, lineup. At he the, was uh, almost like that. In that and he had two wow. things they came up with, and, and they were both like, I'm thinking. Did I you ask him, of, first of all, did you ask him, how do you know this? Did you ask him he's that? Di- he says he's, he knows. He just says he knows. Oh, he, he studies he knows. it. Yeah. Okay. yeah he's, and he, has not, he was not a biologist. He wasn't anything of the sort. He's just a, a guy that's very interested and, in and, and he fish. felt that you fishing. needed to know that yeah. when fish die, they grow. Yeah, well, because you and I, because like you said, the people that recognize us or whatever. Well, this guy was at the sportsman show, so he recognized us for sure. And he just, yeah, he shared, he shared all that's with me. That's the best. Yeah, hey, he, the best. he was good, and he was positive. I'm telling you, <laughs> well, positive. He, he must have been good enough to convince you that it I was had to worth ask him about it. Yeah, exactly. I had to ask, yeah. So did uh, Doctor Cook laugh at you at all? When you- no, he was good about it. We asked because because we did before we started the web segment. We said, you know, I just got a back and forth email stuff. And then we said, Stephen, this is very interesting. Do you mind if we put fish talk with a doc into a paper for a written form? And he said, no, go for it. Sure. So nice. now, now we're going to hopefully the guy at the sportsman show, who didn't even, I don't even know his name, who hopefully he started a whole thing for us now, a whole new thing for us on dot com. So going to be one of those days. I have a feeling. Uh, you figure? I, I- <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fan question uh, submitted by Chris Bransma. Ontario boy. Bransma from Ontario. Yes, finally an Ontarian. Uh, 
it's still keeps nodding off back there. I can't quite see. Oh, he's home. okay. He's you, there. You had good I got a view of him. Don't you I worry. I see his head nodding every no, once in no, a while. No, no, he's no. good. Volvo's good. good. Volvo's right. the hardest working guy I don't want him to fall if he uh, nods completely, fall straight down his, his head desk on and a, hit his head on Hit his head on his phone or exactly. his, his uh, Keep MacBook. Keep an eye on, on his Keep MacBook. Keep an eye on for him. Put a big dent in that MacBook Pro there. Chris Bransma from Ontario says... Wow. Uh, by the way, he, uh, it, via the email, he sent this via email. It's probably the best way, especially if you got a long one like Chris does. I'm talking about Chris's uh, question. Bada boom. Okay. There you go. Uh, if you have a long one like Chris does, you might want to do it by email in order to accommodate all of those uh, wonderful words. Uh, but you can also submit a question via um, uh, Facebook or Instagram page. But sure. the best way to do it is info at fishingcanada.com. That goes right to the boss, doesn't it? No, it goes to Dean, who puts oh. it in the drum. Is Dean not he the boss? He prints it out. Is not Dean not the boss? Well, it could this be. This podcast? Yeah. There's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> he prints it out, and because he, he likes paper. He wants them on, on paper like that. Okay. So he prints them all out. And AK. Puts them in the... AK. AK. This is a long one. Well, we can be, let's split this one up, you and I. How about All right. Well, you, you, don't, think do you, you don't think I can do it? Well, yeah, if you want. I it's am getting tired. I am tired. You. I mean, keep in mind, I listened to this guy for over an hour steady. Eh? Today, this is before and this podcast. Before this podcast. Through this thing, so. so anyways, um, Chris says, I have always thought about joining a bass club. Great idea. A yep. Wonderful idea. Especially, especially if you're into bass. Yeah. Be a good idea. Yeah, trout angler might not be so. Eh, uh, not, uh, you could, but it. not. Yeah. Well. Uh, but have never had the time. So now that I'm, he's a, <laughs> older than dirt, <laughs> he says, uh, and having moved to Kingston for a job, I'm revisiting. Is this Reno that wrote this? It sounds like it. it so far, so far. Older than dirt in Kingston so exactly. far. Exactly. He moved. I told you he moved. He's out of Kingston now. Where is he now? So, I told you, he's his 22nd move. He's uh, <laughs> north of Kingston somewhere. I haven't found Oh, I like yet. that area, though. That is a nice area. Maybe um, he's on Sterling, uh, and, and what's uh, maybe, uh, Newborough maybe, Lake Maybe there. he's on Newborough. He yeah, can become our local advisor. Nice. I like that. Nice. Anyways, uh, Chris uh, goes on to say, I, I talked to a co-worker who was part of the Limestone City Club uh, before COVID hit. Uh, but he hadn't heard from the club in some time, so I tried reaching out to them, and all I got was crickets. <laughs> there you go, Mr. Ball. Then I tried an old co-worker who was part of the Gananoque Club. He informed me that limestone had folded. So he's barking up a bad tree right there, right? So my question is, how does someone like myself start a new bass club chapter in Kingston? Or is it such a monumental task that I shouldn't take it on? Thanks, guys. Well... Wow. Uh, the uh, Great question. The OntarioBass.com. Go to OntarioBass.com, and it's the B-A-S-S Ontario Bass Nation is what that does. And I believe if you, uh, if you have six people, you can start a club through that. And it is a, a sanctioned club. If Ontario. you want to go to that, to a sanctioned club. Exactly. But, if you want but, to have, but, but, which, but Chris doesn't need to. But why not? They could, uh, they could eventually fish maybe, the Bassmaster Classic through through clubs. They somehow get there through these uh, the the amateur. There's an amateur or two in every Bassmaster Classic through a club somehow affiliation that can actually get there. So why wouldn't you do that? Unless it's a very expensive. Uh, well, endeavor. there's, there's going to be costs of some sort. Right. You could just start a club on your yeah, own, no, right? Why but not start on your own? Just big, you know, Chris's Bass Club. I don't know, and call some buddies and. And Everybody uh, wants start to call it the Kingston Bass Club, probably, but the sounds of things, right? You get the Gananoque, Chris's you get the Limestone. Chris's Kingston Bass Club. How about that? Maybe he doesn't want to have his name uh, associated, associated, with associated with it. Associated with just wants a nice bass club, the members and groups, and he can build them, build them, build, and they can have some nice call Reno. and tournaments. Call Reno. Call Reno. You want some money, he can loan you some. A little well, bit of an Reno. interest rate I'll there. but Reno's number. Uh, no, I don't. I have no idea. I mean, I, I, it, it's it's as easy as you want to make it. Obviously, yeah. Right? But I, if you want to do it, go to ontariobass.com dot com, and you can yeah. you can get a good idea. There's a whole um, form you can fill out and start it up if you want. So you get a bass club. You know, bass, so a lot of times in bass clubs, what what they do is they have jackpot tournaments, right? So they put out some cash. So and let's have a jackpot tonight, a Thursday night jackpot, and we put fifty bucks each in, and then it's just a cash winning, right? Well. That got brought to the 
ultimate level, last week or the week before in the U.S., $5,000 cash jackpot tournament for the pros or whoever wants to go in it. 5K cash. You like that, eh? You like that so far? No? I, I need more. I need more. He's in Lake Lanier in Georgia. Okay. And of all people in this world to win, guess what? Chris Johnston won it. $65,000 U.S. He won in this okay. tournament. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Stop for a minute. So there's a club in the U.S. It's an organization. It's an organization, I believe, that held this cash tournament. And it was 5000 bucks to enter. Per angler. Single tournament. No live scope. None of that stuff, apparently, too. Apparently, I think that's the tournament. They said none of that. No 360 and no live scope. No live imaging. Sorry, not no live scope. Hey, want to enter? Five grand U.S. to get in. Wow. So Chris won. Not only did he win the $65,000 first prize, US. he won the big bass as well. <laughs> Holy smokes. And Corey got, I think, sixth so as well. So they did. And Gus, he was in the top 10, I believe, too. So, so this must be a bunch of the boys, the tournament they, it's, boys. It's open up to the turn, any tournament guy. Any, probably anybody that wants has five grand cash. And I you're maybe see, a member. I love that. Yeah. You know, that... And, and I know it's a lot of money for sure. It's a, a lot. And of not money. everybody can afford it and stuff. But but look at what you're drawing. Look at that 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 club drew. Yeah. The guys, the caliber of angler. That, oh my that God! Drew. Everybody in there was. Uh, it wasn't a huge wow. uh, amount of entries, uh, but I'll tell you, they were all top notch guys for wow. sure. Yep. Cash. Just put That's your money up, crazy. there, boys, and let's go. That's crazy. Oh, the lovely, the talented. Nick? Nikolai Volchevsky. He's alive and well. He's probably going to... He just there came goes in. Joe. To, Joe. There goes Joe. Joe. See you later. See you, Nick. Okay. Oh, Nick's oh, gone oh, again. Oh, yeah, he's gone. They just come yeah, in there. And out forgot here. to wipe his bum. He's got to go uh, back there. That's not him. very nice. Yeah. Well, I, what else is he doing over there? The lunchroom <laughs> or the shitters? Which one is he in? One of the two, God. right? <laughs> Anyways, uh, Chris, don't know whether we answered any of your questions or not, but we endeavor to. The, that's just it. We... Try. Try and our we best, have fun buddy. and we have fun doing it. Try our and that's best. really what it's all about. The humble goldfish, everyone's favorite aquatic pet. It's small, easy to care for. What's there not to love? Even the cat may be mesmerized by the color and movements of your aquarium friends. Goldfish are great at home but don't let them loose. Releasing goldfish or other domestic aquatic pets or plants into natural environments is harmful to both your pet and the planet. Goldfish disrupt ecosystems by outcompeting native species for food and resources in degraded habitats. They contribute to algae blooms, they kill aquatic wildlife, and pass viruses and diseases contracted in aquariums to wildfish. They could even live up to 40 years and grow as big as a football. Anglers, this is where you come in. If you find a goldfish at your local fishing spot, report it to the Invading Species Hotline or go online to eddmaps.com. Remember to never dump your live bait into the water and risk spreading other aquatic invaders. Keep our lakes free from invaders and don't let them loose. What brings people together more than fishing and hunting? How about food? I'm Chef Antonio Maleca and I've spent years catering to the stars. Now, on Outdoor Journal Radio's Eat and Wild podcast, Louise, Hooksat, and I are bringing our expertise and Rolodex to our real passion, the outdoors. Each week, we're bringing you inside the boat, tree stand, or duck blind and giving you real advice that you can use to make the most out of your fish and game. You're going to flip that duck breast over once you get a nice hard sear on that breast. You don't want to sear the actual meat. And it's not just us chatting here. If you can name a celebrity, we've probably worked with them. And I think you might be surprised who likes to hunt and fish. When Kit Harrington asks me to prepare him sashimi with his bass, I couldn't say no. Whatever Taylor Sheridan wanted, I made sure I had it. Burgers, steak, anything off the barbecue. That's a true cowboy. All Jeremy Renner wanted to have was lemon ginger shots all day. Find Eating Wild now on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever else you get your podcasts. All right, let's get to the important part of the show, not that the previous part wasn't hey, important. Hey, come on now. But he is our special guest. Well, he's very special. I, I will know. say that. Uh, Steve Tate from uh, Maple Leaf Marine joins us now. He is our boat guy. How you doing, buddy? 
Doing great. How are you guys? Good. We're thanks, doing man. good, Steve. Good. Boating season is upon uh, us now, buddy. It's uh, it's starting. It's on. We it's, were we were just in the shop. Boats. Yeah, we were just in the shop, Pete and I, just getting getting the boats ready to go. We can't wait to get get on the road, as I'm sure most people are um, in this part of the world this time of year. But there are some do's and don'ts, some things that need to take place before that. Yes, this season. is spring, though. Obviously, people that are listening a long time from now, if they go back to this episode, this is April in Ontario, right. and the ice has been gone for basically a month or a lot of places, and up north is still just easing out, but in the southern part of the province, the water's been open, and people are chomping at the bit to get out, and mostly fishermen and fisher anglers, I should say, not fishermen, anglers, because the pleasure boaters probably aren't out this early, but they're starting to think well, about it, right? Well, let's find out. Are they starting to bug you already at your uh, service centers in the marine? Steve? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's interesting. Um, what it like I said, we're obviously a little bit colder up north and we're kind of delayed in our weather coming out of seasons compared to the city centers. And as a result, um, yeah, you know, the, the phone calls, the emails, they all pick up, which is, you know, a, a great sign and we're very excited about it. But from a logistical standpoint, it's challenging. I mean, you know, to give you an idea, we've already put boats in and out twice like literally they've, they've gone in because they need them they want them to use them to honestly access their properties which is you know totally valid and they're they're free right to do but uh you know you put a boat in the water and the next day they're they stay overnight and they're trapped out there or they come back and the boat's frozen in the lake where we are we got busted out so it's you wow. know as much as everybody's yeah. very excited it's yeah. still yeah. until i would say right now like literally this week it, it just hasn't been usable but in saying all of that, you know, your contractors using your heavy gauge aluminum boats and your anglers using the lighter gauge aluminum boats, uh, they, they've been in and out somewhat. And I mean, I think it's okay as long as, especially with the lighter gauge aluminum, the recreational user, that they are pulling that boat out at night. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't get frozen in. I mean, to be honest, a heavy gauge aluminum boat, if, you know, if it gets frozen in and the amount of ice we're getting right now, it's probably not going to be detrimental. But, right. you know, riveted light gauge, I wouldn't be playing the game yet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I never, I, 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 Angie and I have both when we've gone fishing in either late like December in open water that's starting to freeze or the shorelines are frozen or even early sometimes, but we broke ice with our boats. Yeah. So we literally drop it in. You, you pick a hole at the boat launch. You, you spot out a big hole, spin it around and your boat just, you kind of really slowly, just like an icebreaker drive up on top of it and, and it pushes it away. But never thought about that. That seems to me like it, when I'm watching it happen, it doesn't seem to be too dangerous as long as you're going really, really slow, but I could see icing in when you get iced in overnight or something like that. That's when, things might, might you know might be a problem i would assume Anyways. well for sure and i mean the other thing you know i think people forget is the the ice doesn't dissipate in a level manner so like for example my personal dock you know it's been wide open now let's say for i don't know two and a half weeks easily right but from my dock to 10 feet out from it i could walk on the ice three days ago not wild Isn't so like wild. there's no ice per se in the bay but what's right off the dock is like a foot. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think the other thing too that we yeah. we forget, like we're focusing on the hull and the aluminum and and whatnot. But you know, all of your water lines on a boat, whether whether it's built, they froze overnight. Or, yeah. yeah, or yeah. Or, or live wells or whatever. I that's mean, that huge. stuff's going to freeze, and that stuff will for crack. Sure. Right, that stuff will crack real easy for sure. Yeah, and per you know our uh, last visit together, those items are much more prone to freezing if they've been in the water and then they're sitting out of the water. If they've been in the water and they're staying in the water, there's in theory a chance that they got another couple of degrees they're okay for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hate to bring it up, but you know, with, with global warming, it is here definitely, or whatever it is, our seasons are starting a little bit earlier. You guys um, at Maple Leaf, obviously your marinas are going to have to, at some point adjust their calendars accordingly, mm -hmm. right? You can't just, keep doing the same thing over and over again when clearly, you know, there may be a couple of weeks, shoulder weeks that you can gain in your season by, by just making that adjustment. Well, totally. And that's where it's, you know, kind of a challenge for us. So we, you know, we try to make the adjustment year to year, but it, it's funny you should bring it up and we're talking today because the masters golf tournament is on. Right. And I can tell you three years ago, I was snowmobiling and I watched the opening round at breakfast in Cochrane. So, wow. Oh my God. It, you know, you're totally right. Like this, I think will be, you know, I, this is the first or sorry, the earliest official that I would say in my Marine career, we've been open. 
but you're only talking by a day or two officially. Right. So yeah. like everybody has this concept of this, you know, has it happened before? It's actually not abnormal. It's just, it, you know, call it, it's like uh, the lunar eclipse we just had where it's like, it actually happens every couple of years where you are in the world. You may right. not see it. Right? right. And it's the same for us. It's just, it's only a couple of days, but your perception in the city center is a little bit different because it goes so quick. Whereas here it takes a little bit longer. So it's not, let's say you look back 10 to 20 years ago, though. Is it a big difference now in your area compared to then? No? No, those cycles, really? sorry, that's I mean. yeah, those cycles just seem to repeat. It's just, you know, wow. we forget, say, after five or six years, but something like this is pretty indicative of every you know, five, yeah. six years, in my, in my opinion. Okay. Yeah. What about now, what about, though, Steve, it sounds to me like it might be easier for those hardcore people that want to get out Earlier than all, it might be easier on the marina if, if indeed, you could have an extra week to start launching boats and working on boats versus that big influx come May when everybody says, oh, Steve, I want my boat in the water. You know, is it not help you a little bit at all? It does. You're right. It allows us to, like, in theory, if the volume's the same, it allows us to spread it out a bit more. Right. Right. Um, but, you know, I've always been a firm believer that the customer is, I mean, they're always our boss, but they're really our boss in the spring. In the fall... <laughs> Respectfully, yeah. Mother Nature's our boss. Right. They, you know, the person yeah. doesn't care so much if the boat gets taken out Tuesday after they used it or if it gets taken out the next Friday as long as it doesn't freeze in, right? right? But if they needed that boat on Tuesday to get out to see, you know, a contractor or somebody on that afternoon, they need the boat Tuesday. Like, it's not a negotiation. So, it's, right. it, 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 yeah, it's more challenging for us in the spring, but to your point, when we get an earlier start, it in theory can level it out a little bit more, spread it out a bit more. Um but that just means the calls also come in earlier. So in theory, maybe your team's not resting as much. I mean, because these, you know, our teams go very hard for the time we're open, and then they rest a bit in the, you know, the off season because we have right. an off season. So right. yeah, it's it's you know, I think at all levels at the end it just changes year to year. Hmm. Um, not to get totally off topic, but it just yeah. something just came to me. Uh, I don't think we've talked about it with you before, um, and it, regarding. Um, boat insurance in the winter period. Yeah, so, great question. So we've heard all kinds of stuff. In fact, the other day, Pete and I were driving to uh, someplace, and we called an insurance company just yeah. to get an independent opinion on what we have been hearing. Because what we have been hearing is that from the months of November till ice out, your boat is not effectively insured. Even on, the, though, on the water. On the water. It's fine in the garage, but if you put it in the water early it may not be insured. So we contacted an agent that uh, is in the know. And uh, in his opinion, uh, unless it's in the contract, your boat's covered. I would agree with that opinion. Right. I mean, you know, you call an expert. I would, I'll tell you I'm an expert on boat sales and stuff like that, not insurance, but I would agree from my general knowledge working within the industry and speaking to, you know, insurance underwriters and providers for our clients and us that, yeah. I haven't heard of a restriction on dates and when you can use it. It's more so you're just buying a full encompassing policy yeah, and right. you know, mother nature moves around. You're allowed right. to use it whenever. Like exactly. if you can make the argument. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. But That's yet the thing. your agent yeah, my, not. So I, I heard about this and uh, this is a brother's all on with Angie and I in the year, a couple of years, last year with them. And I called my, my insurance agent and they said, I don't know about that. I'll have to look into it. And sure as shit, they come back with it. And they said, here it is. And they sent me a copy. And it says, uh, the December 1st to uh, March 31st, you are not covered on the water at all. And when they said that, was in it like, were they specific with the exclusion? Like, is it you're not covered for your collision? Or is it you're not no, covered, you're go- for, you're covered for everything else? Any- on the road, at the launch, you're covered. As long as it's not in the water. Everything was else was covered. So you could be what, towing it all winter long, and it could flip on the side of the road, and it'd be good. But you can't put it in the water. And what's weird about this is that we're finding out that, and in Pete's case, that was in the fine print of his exactly of his yeah. insurance policy. He was never informed. Nope. Of that, that's a problem to me. I mean, that, that's, you know, that's we have to inform you where a kill switch is on the boat. You exactly. Know what I mean? like Exactly. So I, I just bring it up because obviously you're in the business and and uh, we, we want to spread this around that we, we, we think based on what we're finding out, you need to read your insurance policy because mm-hmm. you may not be covered on the water 
from November to March, I think it was, wasn't it? It was Dece- yeah, all from oh. December right to the end of March. Right till the end of March. So, so yeah, April is- reading your policy, that is news to me. I appreciate you letting me know too. Yeah. I've yeah. never heard of an exclusion like that. Usually what happens is people don't want to insure it, just like they don't want to insure a snowmobile over the summer. Right, um, right. Exactly. But what you, most of the time, in my experience, I've seen is, you know, the insurance companies know that and they've weighted everything. So if you cancel, you know, you have a four hundred dollar policy, let's say, and you cancel it for, you know, the winter months, well, you're going to get twenty five dollars back. So right. you really want to not have fire and theft and liability on it for that twenty five right. bucks. You know what I mean? Like all the money is in uh, what the time, the months when you're supposed to be using it. So what it sounds like to me in the case uh, that you just brought up there, I would guess, is they have to reduce, you know, the premium they've essentially put out the usage part for those months to, right. you know, whittle that down a bit. But in, again, in my experience with waiting, I, I think I, that your insurance provider said that to you, that it would be incumbent upon you to ask them to shop a different underwriter because right. that right. seems uncommon to me so far. And how do you say this? I mean, to me, if it was $25 more, I'd pay it knowing I can go boating whenever Hell I want. Yeah. Right. Damn right, buddy. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll pretty much pay whatever, you know, if I can get out there earlier or later for sure. So, yeah, it was weird. Yeah. It was the, it was definitely an eye-opener. What, what eye did opener. you end up doing? I, I still have the same policy. And it's with a big company. I won't say the name of the company, but it's with one of the bigger marine policies, uh, companies, you know what I mean? And, and so, so you cannot so boat I, during the winter months. That's correct. My first outing was last weekend, which is the first weekend in April. So... In, in March, we used my buddy's smaller boat, who doesn't give a shit, give the rat's ass, and he said, let's go, I don't care about that. And we used up until then, and now we're using, gonna use my boat. So, yeah, so now wow. I know I'm insured, but uh, yeah, but I've been fishing for, I've been fishing, Anne's knows, I've been fishing all winter. I was out in January, no, February, in the boat, and March, two times in the boat or whatever, we've been out like in open water all winter long, basically, you're out there not insured, you know. And maybe his policy is different than mine, but I know mine, is not insured, so. Well, then pay and, the yeah. extra 25 bucks, like I, Steve says it. I'd and love quit to. And cheap it out and I get told them that. I said to them, how about I pay you guys the extra to get her paid for the, they said, no, we don't do that. We don't even offer that. Oh, my. Honestly, you know me, I'd do that. You know, in my heartbeat oh. for 25 bucks, I'd be paying 200 bucks if I could. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. But, yeah, it's weird. Anyway, so, it's you just, know, what? the other thing is about, like, motorcycle insurance used to be that same way, mm-hmm. right? You yeah. didn't, because of this global warming I was talking about. Nobody get their bike out in November, or let's say December or January. Now, guys are biking whenever they can. But, they get that motorcycle out my whenever they bike, can. My motorcycle insurance does not automatically exclude me from driving in the no. months. It's up to me. And we, as motorcyclists, will generally take a six-month policy yeah, but you're at least they give you the offer uh, option right oh, off it's the hop, up front. right yeah. yeah it's right up front yeah i mean so you i can, can do pay 12 it. months but it used to never used to be because you didn't have, so you know. go ahead in the sense that you don't legally need insurance to have a boat on the water you need legally need insurance to have a motorcycle on the road right so my guess is in the underwriting background on the marine side they've seen an option where it's like hey we can pull this coverage out without a legal effect to it and we can offer that you know premium discount whereas on motorcycle they probably aren't due to regulatory bodies allowed to do that would be my guess yeah Yeah. it's just something to look at i guess uh, people that are listening that own boats that have insurance on boats uh, you, you you might want to read the fine print from now Absolutely. on because it's shocked just us. Ask. We yeah. were totally shocked that this was even mm-hmm. happening. So yeah, just yeah. read the fine print. I'm sure that uh, the options are there. Uh, this this particular agent said that he would think that it would be strange that they wouldn't highlight it if you're signing a policy that they wouldn't yeah. highlight it and say, by the way, Mr. Bowman, you do realize you cannot exactly. be voting from. Uh, exactly. and, and in his opinion. In his opinion, uh, regardless of what the policy says, if they didn't get a signature from him on that clause, he doesn't think it would stay. He says, I know a lawyer. He says, I know a lawyer. <laughs> and it and it's a good one. Yeah, so. <laughs> he likes that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. So, but Anyways, yeah. just thought we'd point point that out. So uh, it, we'll go back to, we'll talk about spring boating and all yeah. that. And we'll go back to my first outing last yes. weekend. So something... It's funny, Ange and I, and I'm sure Steve, we boated our whole lives, right? So first thing on that, you have to be prepared no matter what, right? So I'll just give you a couple instances that happened. 
Got the boat all readied up before I even left. You know, it's all, now everything's good. I had some low air in the tire, made sure the tire was good. Everything else I had a tune-up done uh, and all that stuff. Get to the boat launch. You know, you got all your procedure. You're doing your whole thing like yeah. that. So Mikey's with me. Mikey Burris, yeah. He's with me. And he's, I says, Mike, do you want to put the boat in? Or do you want to put the truck? Oh, I'm not starting your boat up. I'll, try, I'll back you in. Beautiful. Let's go. So we back her in there. I'm just, you know, just about to get off the boat. And I, I go... Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got those stupid steering blocks on there. I forgot to take those things off. You know what I mean? So you got to, you have to have a whole routine. But my point is here is you'll forget over the winter time, all of us will forget. And especially the casual of all casual boaters, they're going to forget for sure their little routine, right? So you and I, Ange and I have a routine of going, taking the straps. Ange does the back of the boat. I do the front of the boat kind of thing. I get in, put the fish finders and all that. We have a real routine, but, but our first outing we're going to go at this year we oh, might forget good. something oh, you know what sure. i mean and now the other thing that happened to me sorry oh go ahead steve if you have something to say i was going to say so you know and this comes from uh one of my first jobs in the marine industry was managing a rental fleet of sea and boats and you learn a lot quickly about human patterns and behavior doing so right. um one golden rule i was always taught is if you're the operator doesn't really matter if you have a partner or a teammate checking everything with you. The critical points are on you as the operator. So, for uh, example, yeah. you, you hit your, your boat to your truck, not the passenger. You <laughs> made sure it clamped. You <laughs> made sure the safety chain's on. You made sure the lights yeah, are in. Yeah. A boat, you make sure the drain plug is in. You make sure the kill switch is in. You make sure you have fuel. Yeah, yeah. And keys. We forgot the keys, keys one time. Keys are <laughs> the keys help a little bit. We forgot them one time, Steve. Took about we, an hour drive. And, we have uh, forgotten, uh, throughout our, our years boating, we have forgotten just about everything that you could possibly forget yeah, for so, your yeah. the start yeah. of your boating season. It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy what we've forgotten. Oil, we've forgotten yeah. keys. Oh, yeah. yeah, oil one time at a tournament. We just, yeah. just didn't have yeah. enough, and we just... <laughs> Oil. The, the, that that morning, the four in the morning in the <laughs> procedure, in the parade to get to the boat lodge. do oh, edge. <laughs> shit. Guess what? And that was one of the two stroke, obviously, but oh my God. Uh, oh yeah. Anyways, that, so that first outing, I'll let uh, people know again. There's another little thing I learned on the weekend is uh, we were fishing some shallow, real shallow stuff. And uh, we were looking as much as we were fishing. So we were driving around with side imaging going and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> and it was very, very shallow. And, um, and I, obviously I didn't trim my motor up far enough. So in the shallow loon, because the water was dirtyish too, right? So it's a really shallow loon shed in there, right? And you can't really tell how deep it is. It looks like on your fish finder, it's two to three feet, but they don't read well on traditional at two to three feet. So long story short, we pull out of this bay, we did some little bit of fishing, but more looking and scouting. Okay, okay, let's go to somewhere else. And we're in that one nice clean water. I put her in gear and just start trolling along. I was like, doot, doot, doot. Uh oh, mm. and on, 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 the, on these bo boats, uh, when you have that, your boat usually it's a, either your oil indication or your heat, uh, your water pump sort intake, of thing like that's yeah. intake. So, so carry along, along, along. I, oh my god, what am I gonna do here? I don't understand it. So I called our mechanic, well my mechanic, boat mechanic, and he says, "Is it pissing out? Is the telltale, you know, leaking out?" And I says, "No, it's not. I knew it wasn't leaking." I said, "But does that?" Is that just not an indicator? He says, no, no, that's not just an indicator. That needs to be flowing full force. He says, what were you doing? I was in there. He says, you know what? In Lake Ontario, all those back bays, you could pull stuff into your intakes. And sure as hell, that little wee piece of hose from my main T, the water pump, out to push it out was plugged. I had to literally pull that thing that was on the water. And you got to pull that, thing, that hose out. I didn't have anything to plunge in there. So there's something you got to remember. And we will remember to put on our boat, a coat hanger, cut a coat hanger piece a foot long and just have it sitting in your toolkit. And, uh, and I, and I unplugged that thing and then sprung, started up and no noise. And then I put it in gear and I was running slower and the water temp is only 42. So it's cold, but I was running slower and it was running up to past like 170, 100, 70 ish degrees and i'm thinking that might be a little hot and luke uh, they got my guy he said it's it is but you're okay with that but as soon as i put her in gear and got it up on run whoosh, that temperature yeah. gauge went right back down with the cold water the pump started pumping it was so important and, I, and it, it's just something that you could you know you, you could probably hear into so my motor intake the water intake at the bottom was sucking up all this mud 
and it plugged up my it pushed it through the system and then plugged up my telltale and, uh, and yeah i was i could have been dead on the water i mean i was gonna we were gonna go back on the electric motor i said okay let's just take the electric motor back to the launch it was a long way it's about a mile or two i said but we'll do it be able to do it no problem but we fixed her out there so it's the lessons you learn out there all the oh, time right for sure so that's got to be something you guys get hammered with all the time especially this time of year oh, I, the water pump the water issue has got to be huge doesn't it steve yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you know, a good thing to do is just, you know, your basic almost run checks in your, you know, early season stuff. So leave it on the trailer, shift it back and forth, you know, check the pee hole, all that stuff, make sure stuff's coming out. Um, I mean, to be honest, I, I, I think you're lucky in the situation that it actually cleared out. If the stuff gets up in that that far, mm -hmm. it usually clogs it, clogs it, and you're blowing it out with air hoses and taking fittings right. apart, cleaning right. it. So, right. um Oh, yeah, trust me, well I had, there, but, trust me, know. I had to hammer that piece of hose on the side of the boat because I didn't have, I just hammered it, and I, no, burp, burp, and pouring water in it, and then a little wee bit of mudded Komodo, see, I think I got it, I'd still be blowing, and it wouldn't come out like that, so yeah, you're, I got lucky for sure on that one, but, oh my God. Now, a question I have for you, because you <clears> just said something very important, um, when you drop your boat in on the trailer, whatever, you're just testing to see if that water's flowing through that telltale. Yep. A lot of times you don't see it when the boat's at idle. You you have to rev it up. Do you not put it in neutral and rev it up right. to get so a good like, flow? Um, what I mean by a shit, like a check is like, so you leave the boat on the trailer, you'll back it in, you're going to trim it down to a point. You'll actually check where your trim is before you fire it up, like in relation to the bottom of the lake. Right. You're going to fire it up. You're going to let it idle. You're going to hear it come up and rev. You're going to let it idle down. You're not actually going to do anything until it idles down, especially at this time of year in the colder. Like, you, it's going to sit there for a minute and a half if it's a newer motor, probably. Right. Idling, you know, five, 600 RPMs higher than it needs to. Let it come down. It will. Once it does that, forward, click. Neutral, click. Reverse, click. Neutral, click. In uh, shift disable button. Advanced throttle, gently hearing it come up. What, you know, give it a bit of idle, say 1500 RPM, walk to the back of the boat, make sure you see the bubbles coming up, make sure the water is coming out of the pee hole, make sure the exhaust is coming out. I mean, this time of year, you don't really know what is frozen and what's not. It could just clog up. Right. Yeah, and right. There's, and there's Super also important. rodents, spiders. I mean, all, all these Everything. things crawl up inside yeah. of these parts, right? Yeah. And one, that's a great point that Angela made. One thing I want to be very clear about too is you do all of that procedure before you start the boat as well. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the shift cable could be frozen. You might get it to go to forward. It may not come back to uh, neutral. Exactly. Quick okay, question yeah. for you, because we do it all the time. Most people listening to this probably do it. Is it okay to turn your motor over for that first time in the spring in your driveway without water pumping into it just to make sure that your battery's not dead just so she kicks over just, just, run, just and then turn it off is that okay these manufacturers behind me are not going to like me answering no. this question man <laughs> but the truth the truth i believe you can i believe you can bark them i yes. don't believe you can let them fire no so in argument's sake by barking, all you're really checking is that the battery, in theory, is going to turn it over. Right. And that, in theory, the motor's not seized. Right. But you're not getting anything beyond that that you asked there. So just because you bark it doesn't mean when you put it in the water and you go to turn it over that that battery would actually have enough cold cranking amps to fire it. So No, but 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 it is <laughs> it is a start. You can now assure yourself, okay, I've got battery. Let's go to the lake and Steve, and explain good. barking it. Right from Bark means it doesn't catch. Like it does not fire or turn on. A bark is like you know what you unintentionally do once in a blue moon in real life where you go Cuh, by accident and you're like ah Ka, ka, ka. So it's just that quick cut. Yeah. The motor, you see a slight movement, but yep. there is no way it would catch and start running. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So tell me this then. You're in the driveway versus in the water. When you mm -hmm. turn her over, bang, turn it off. So there's that much water coming into that impeller up and through that pump system to keep it cool? Or what's the what's this no, danger? No, that's not it at all. It's the impeller will instantly burn out. Ah, Yes, Imagine see. holding just a piece of, like, say, uh, I mean, they're thicker than this, but say, like, a thick plastic pop bottle. Mm -hmm. You put a torch to it for even a split second. Yeah. Yeah. Same effect. 
Wow. Hmm. See, that's interesting. You're, what you're doing, and that's the problem, is you're not going to see what you created as a problem off right. the get-go. It's going to create you a real problem once you're out there. So, in other words, at idle, you're like, say you bark, say you didn't bark it, say you did the old cut cut boom, and then you turned it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you put it in the water. You've weakened that impeller. It's melted. It's deteriorating. It gets in the water as it's flying apart. Still, you're idling out. And it's keeping that motor somewhat cool because it's not to say of the percentage of the impellers demanding 20% of its performance, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's breaking down. It's still able to maintain that 20%. Then you demand throttle. You take off, you get up on plane, you're moving, you're looking around now because you should be because you're moving faster. Gauge is climbing and you don't even notice it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. There you go. Now, those impellers are, they're freaking massive. They're thick though. Are they not like, are they not? Uh... They're not made for any form of heat. Like they're made to be submersed in water right. their entire life. Right, right, right. Interesting. Wow. It, there you go. See? See, see I mean, we have, so here, here's a little, you know, call it trick up here in the really clean, beautiful lakes. Like we don't trim our motors up. Like trimming the motor up is bad for everything outside of the motor. So like in Florida, they're doing this because the water is eating all the components of the motor, right? Right. right. When you trim it up, you're exposing your trim cylinders, you know, in theory, a small hair of your impeller, um, all of your seals technically around the prop. I mean, they're just pointing straight to the sky when they're trimmed, like when they're trimmed up, yeah, they're yeah. just pointing straight to the sky and sunlight is baking that stuff. Wow, what a great so, point. And you're, you're kind of picking like, who is my worst enemy in these Southern states where it's salt water, it's incredibly, you know, hard on the stuff. They have to trim it out because the water is the enemy at that point for sitting mm -hmm. up here where it's freshwater lakes and say, it's not that high of, you know, it's not the overly hard water and it's not full of acid and all that. Well, theory, the sun is now a worse enemy than that water. So leave the motor turned down in water. I wonder why the, why people have the tendency to trim it up. Uh, as is docked? Is there just, they think that in their mind it's out of the water is uh, better? I think it's, you know, excuse the phrase, it's almost monkey see, monkey do. Like, I mean, there's more boats in the state of Florida than in all of Canada, right? So right. you're just seeing this is what the mass does. I'm just going to replicate it. But really, yeah, yeah. it's more application-based, like a mountain snowmobile versus a trail snowmobile. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's yeah. where you are, your environment, and the product you're using. Hmm. I got another question for you on the driveway uh, startup deal. The earmuffs that you buy at Canadian Tire, yeah. at your marina, whatever like that, how mm -hmm. effective or ineffective are they? Are they like, you see a lot of water spitting out from them. That's for sure. I guess that's when there's not started. Even when it's running, it, it does the same thing. It almost seems like you have to have a higher RPM going before you get a good telltale coming out. Uh, are, are they are, are they crap or are they good? Or are they? No, it's, it's, it's the, I would say it's the, the physics change, like, excuse the phrase, but you're going from sucking to blowing. Right. Ah, the right. impeller is designed to impel, to suck. Right. The impeller is not designed to have a, for a lack of a better word, a power washer forcing the water at it. So that's right. why you're seeing so much spray back. But in saying that, you know, how do you say this? If you, if you had a glass and I just spray it with a garden hose, I'm not going to fill that glass very efficiently. If I put the glass under the tap and I let the water go into it, it's going to fill nicely. So the the muffs are not the problem at all. The amount of pressure coming out the hose is really the problem. And what we see is, you know, in a city center where you're on city water, you have pretty good regulated pressure. Odds are you're probably okay. And if anything, it may not be getting enough water because you've given it too much pressure. Okay. In the northern environments where you're on wells, lakes, pumps like that, like, you know, you're firing it up at your cottage, you've got the pump running, and all of a sudden, you know, your teenager's taking a shower, and your spouse is now doing dishes, you're not going to notice that pressure drop. You're actually going to get, like, a false sense of security because you're going to see water's not spitting out everywhere. You're going to be like, oh, the engine's sucking it in. It's good now. <laughs> well, no, you don't actually have enough pressure going to it. The motor's heating up. Or if the motor's not heating up, the impeller might be weakening already. Wow. So I am not a big fan of muffs, and that's easy for me to say because I live on the lake and we have lakes everywhere here. But if you need them, you need to, or if you're going to use them, you need to be very conscientious that the muff is not the issue. It's the water pressure amount going in. 
So is, is there a muff that, or something? Is there a muff that you can get that's better than others? Because I know mechanics don't use the same one. They use the one with the pins that go right through and all that stuff. Is there no? I, I don't think it's making that much of a difference if it's just getting the volume it needs. Right. I mean, the volume is the critical part. It's again regulating the pressure that's, you know, you're trying to make it like simulate its environment, like give it as yeah. much water as you can, but let it pull on its own accord. You know what I mean? So the perfect solution is to have some kind of a, a drum. Like for example, our producer Dean, he has this 45 gallon drum that he uses for That's contest. Awesome. See, you just, you fill that up, so you put the water in and off you go. So we can borrow yeah, like, How do you say this? Yeah. In electrical terms, it would be low voltage, lots of amperage. There you go. There you go. There you Problem go. solved. Wow. All See? we have to do is talk Dean into letting letting us use his forty five gallon drum. Is it rusty? Because rust might get in the impeller and in through the system, and then I don't know if I'd like but, that. By the way, um, are you still in therapy for the lack of snow? Or are you are you getting? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I yeah, understand completely, awesome. buddy. Uh, next year, it's going to be a, a a wicked winter season. I can tell you right now. So. It'll start, it's going to start like in, in September, you'll be snowmobiling. Perfect. Okay. So you don't have to worry. We interrupt this program to bring you the much anticipated bonus code for the latest Fish in Canada giveaways. This week's code is Life Jacket. That's Life Jacket. L-I-F-E-J-A-C-K-E-T. Just type that in the bonus code section of the contest and receive 100 free entries towards all our current giveaways. For those who haven't entered yet, what the heck are you waiting for? Head on over to fishingcanada.com while you listen to the rest of this episode. Click contests and sign up for all the latest Fishing Canada giveaways. And now, back to the show. Uh, how are things at the, so the marina's all uh, pretty much open and underway, all of the, uh, tell folks a little bit about your operation, by the way. Yeah, thanks. Well, actually, we have some exciting news. So we just added another marina to our portfolio uh, last week. So nice. really excited about that. Uh, Port Sandfield Marina on Lake Joseph right here in Muskoka. So um, just, you know, re-solidifies our footprint here in this market and uh, very excited about that. It's been business for like 60, 70 years. So wow. Very cool. Um, but yeah, so Maple Leaf Marinas is now up to 20 uh, marine locations in central Ontario through a cottage country. We have 27 distinct boat brands to offer, uh, brands in each segment and at each value point. Um, you know, and the, and the company is a very diverse offering in the sense that we can maintain boats of 100 feet with, you know, living accommodations and quarters on them and all the systems that go along with it. Um, we also are proud to sell you know, wave runners and personal watercrafts on the, say, small extreme of that, op, you know, the opposite to it, um, and everything in between from, you know, a wide variety of great fishing boats, tow boats, center console salt fishing boats. So, yeah, we try to offer, uh, like I say, um, a product for everyone and at a different price for everyone, depending on what you're looking for. Excellent. Those are your brands behind you there and you're behind your shoulder. Those are the brands behind me. So this is actually, somebody said it to me the other day. They're like, you know, that was really strategic of you to put all those brands on your wall right behind uh, when you're doing virtual calls. And I was exactly. like, yeah, that's, that's a great idea. I didn't do it for that reason. I got them all here so I can remember them when I'm doing things. So uh, yeah, it was a happy, uh, happy coincidence, but they're all nice. honestly fantastic brands and we're, we're proud to be partners. With so people. now nice. that you represent pretty much every legitimate boat brand on the planet yeah. in my opinion um if i were to ask you the benefits and virtues of aluminum versus fiberglass i and the reason that before you mm -hmm. answer i asked you this about 20 years ago on the radio mm -hmm. show but you weren't in the position that you are now where you actually have practical experience on all of them aluminum versus glass give us the definitive the definitive so, uh, yeah i mean this is a you know, I'll, so this is more steve opinionated than call it like industry standard or you know general tone um i'm a fan of fiberglass boats okay. i grew up with fiberglass boats um i'm generally on bigger water uh fiberglass is heavier generally um it's 
ironically easier to repair. Um, and it just fits my kind of lifestyle of boating. So I'm a glass guy first. I would then say I'm a heavy gauge aluminum guy next and heavy gauge aluminum generally has to be welded due to its size. Um, and then I would say after that, I'm an aluminum, um, sorry, light gauge aluminum riveted style boat. I, I believe light gauge aluminum should be riveted for the most part in my opinion. And that's, that's all just, like I said, based on where I grew up, the type of boating I did and just what my preference is. You know, I, I drive a Ford truck instead of a Chev, let's say, is one better than the other? No, it's just a preference thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in other words, you give me the same answer you gave me 20 years ago. That's good. So we have no definitive <laughs> I'm still answer. still a politician, if that's what you're asking, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very much up to the individual and what they plan on doing with that boat, obviously. That has a yeah, lot. Yeah, and maybe what, the, what they're used to as well. Like well, Steve yeah, says, like he's run fiberglass his whole yeah. life. It's pretty hard to move to an aluminum. And, and, yeah. But once you get into an aluminum, like we've been running now, it's now oh. you're saying, oh God, that's a no-brainer. I Why can stay with you? aluminum, no problem. Yeah. You know Why what I mean? So. And, yeah, like application makes a difference. So when I say like I grew up with fiberglass, to your point, it's I did, and fiberglass was always in the water to me. If I was okay. a trailer boater, I would probably look more to a light gauge aluminum, to be honest. Like, I mean, it's lighter to tow behind my truck. It's, it's quicker in and out. Um, you know, one little reason I prefer fiberglass is because my boats again sit in the water. It's easy to acid wash a fiberglass boat in all technicality doing that to an aluminum boat, you can stain it. So yeah. cleaning aluminum boats is a little bit more work for the aluminums that sit in the water all the time. Whereas I would actually say cleaning a fiberglass boat is probably more cumbersome for the ones coming in and out. So again, it's just application of where you are and what you're doing. What's what's an acid watch? What, what wash? What's that? Sorry, it's a term we use. So you can buy this, you know, um, environmentally friendly product that essentially it's like an acid wash. It just makes the just, bottom of a fiberglass so it's like gunk, all, all that stuff that doesn't come off with wa- soap and water. It comes all okay instantly. Wow. Now, in saying that, that's application again, because if you go to Florida, the Mecca of boating, everything's got anti-foul paint on it, and you can't use that. The acid wash would take the anti-foul paint off. <laughs> so it would be counterproductive. Oh, wow. you know what I mean? Interesting. There is a product, though, if, and correct me if I'm wrong. Booyah. Booyah. Booyah wash. I, me. I watch, I've read and watched their videos. Apparently, that is one of the only uh cleaning solutions that they have in the southern states is this stuff called buoy i don't even think it's available we can't we can't get it in canada yeah. i tried to get some I don't think, yeah and the vc for there's a a bottom paint that's being uh grandfathered right now as well so there's definitely changes in i would say that industry yeah. a lot right now to be honest um but they're good changes they're all you know we're, we're not seeing really product deterioration as they're making it better for the environment so to me that's a win is there something available in Canada, Steve, that people can buy, uh, you know, just uh, off the shelf? And to be frank, this is embarrassing because I'm not in the, de- the dealerships day to day anymore. I can't remember the product names off my head, but yeah, like at each of our marinas, we offer products that you can spray on and it'll basically take the gunk right off. Okay. Uh, what's the uh, sweet spot these days in terms of, uh, of consumer buys? What, uh, what's the trend? What's, what's everybody looking at now? Um, yeah, I mean, everything seems to be going along, you know, pretty steadily for its own, I would say, segment within the market. I mean, you know, we sell more tow boats in the Muskokas and we sell more center console fishing boats out on Georgian Bay. So I'm not seeing any kind of, okay. you know, massive dip or increase in any of the models or sorry, the product segments or in the geographic markets. Everything seems to be pretty consistent. Um the one thing I will say, and you know, this keeping in mind, I used to sell snowmobiles to earn a living. Um, you know, Canada seems, especially our clients, um, they seem to follow the weather, not the economy as much. So, if you know, we had a let's be honest, I mean, you can you ask me the question, and I'm depressed about it. I had no snowmobile, there is nothing. So, I think anybody that's in my, you know, type of shoes or that type of person pent up right now regardless yeah. of really what's coming in income wise or what's going on in the world or in canada even economically it's like uh you know what at the end of the day i get the snowmobile i am gonna burn an extra couple hundred dollars in fuel in my boat the second i can i'm yeah, just he's probably right eh? yeah yeah that'd be a natural tendency yeah. frustration yeah um bass boats yeah in canada what's 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 the deal is it is it i know for a, a period um, 
it, they were really rising in sales and popularity, and then they seemed kind of just to wean off a little bit. Where are they now? Where's a good old fashioned? So it's glass a good bar? question, and um, there's, I guess, an intimate answer and a, you know, the PR answer. Um, Give us both. Okay, so the PR answer is you're you're not wrong with what you're seeing. Uh, you could argue that it's specific interests. So, for example, I'll make a, a towboat comparison. So, so the, say a bass boat is like a ski boat and, you know, the general fishing boat is like a wakeboard boat. Well, you know, wakeboarding, wake surfing, all that's more common right now. So everybody's going to that wakeboard boat. So in that case, everybody's going to your general fishing boat that enables you to do a lot of other things too. They're not buying just a water ski boat that only does that. And that's kind of the same as the bass boat, but all, you know, it's specific to that. Um, the outside of it, and this is where, frankly, on the, like I said, the intimate knowledge, um, you know, the towboat industry and saying that will support those ski boats a little bit easier for the dealer financially. Um, the bass boat market is the toughest financial market for the. So as a result, the dealer is, is apprehensive to take a risk on the segment without the support from the manufacturer. And especially when that segment is probably per, per foot, the most expensive <laughs> both 100% both that's why I on the use planet. a towboat it's an analogy a bass boat and a towboat are oh. the only things that are 22 feet long and can cost over $200,000 I mean, exactly yeah. that, that's the the rhyme and reason of it so mm -hmm. from a dealer's standpoint you know just the 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 thought of of having to inventory yeah yeah that stuff yeah, right? versus, yeah. exactly you know, versus you might sell it you know you know, floor plan maybe. or no floor plan yeah. it, it it's uh, it's crazy that's it. And then by the other token, risk on the dealer side, you know, a good comparison would be like Malibu and Cobalt because they're the same ownership group. You know, the CEO will say, oh, and Cobalt this year, it's great. I got eight gel colors. You know, we brought out two new gel colors, huge percentage increase, eight over six. And you're like, yeah, great. And then he goes, Malibu, 38 gel colors. Oh, my God. So if you're the dealer <laughs> and you're not, this isn't a sole boat, you're stocking it. You got 38 colors to pick from versus six. It's a lot easier picking from six to eight than it is 38 to hit what you think is going to be right stock for that person coming off the street. Right. Wow. Is, is yeah. it like the trailer? I know you, you, we're going to have to cut you loose here, but I just I have a question. Is it like the trailer industry for these dealers? In other words, uh, yeah. there's floor planning and, 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 you know, uh, curtailments and all that stuff. Is it the same, same you thing? Nailed it. And the Marine industry is, you know, in that sense, I'd say the least evolved or, um, like, you can have, say in the trailer world or in the auto world, you know, you could have all these manufacturers and they're going to function within this parameter of dealer support. We're going to help you with a bit with current tailwinds. We're going to help you a bit with interest. We're going to do all that, yada, yada. In the, in the marine industry, it, it's just so wide. So one boat manufacturer will say, thanks for buying the boats. Bye-bye. <laughs> have a good day, right? Like you got to sell it for more than you just bought it for and there's no support and you're, it's your cash and see you later. Yeah. Other manufacturers are kind of like in the middle ground where they're like, hey, you know, regardless of our manufacturing schedule, if you take this many boats, you know, we'll give you some interest support, some curtailment curbing until these dates. Yeah. And you're like, okay, yep. And then you'll have ones that are completely driven like the auto industry or the power sports industry where it's like, you're taking this many in this time period. And if you sell this many in this time period, we're going to support the ones that are coming in the future. We're going to rebate the ones that you already sold. It becomes a very complex business model. And it, it moves more from, you know, moving units than say per the individual deal. And that's, you know, you can see that in relation to how big the manufacturer is. Right. Yeah. So certain ones are selling 5,000 boats a year and they need to be on those programs. So you sell a certain amount of volume. Other boat manufacturers are selling two, 300 a year and they just, Want to know that you're going to sell those two to three hundred? They're not going to support. Yeah, hmm. yeah. It's a, it's a crazy, it's a crazy business. I can tell you that. I'll having, tell you. Uh, so you rem you so reminded me the the, tra the trailer dealer. Some of these trailer companies that are selling trailers, their inventory is massive. Like like you'll see you drive along the four hundred one, you'll see it for the size of two city blocks. Yeah. full of inventory yeah. and going back to city by it's, it's hey you know what i'm talking about oh, there's yeah. places that you yeah, see yeah, it's yeah. just like oh my god how does he do funny, this funny uh just quickly you know being from that industry years ago you know dealer dealers are the last man on the totem pole right they get all the crap from the bottom and the top and they gotta deal with it and make things work so sometimes they have to get creative in how they 
how they uh, manage their uh, their inventory. And I remember being stuck many times where 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 you would not put the boat through because the way it works is is that you pay interest on those boats when they're in your showroom. Once you sell the boat, then you need to get the paperwork off to the whatever you're using for financing to let them know that the boat is no longer here and therefore here's the money for it. And, and well, you know, in the, in the uh, early 80s, you know, there was some wheeling and dealing, zigging and zagging going on to the point where at some point they put inspectors on the road. And I don't know whether they're still there or not, but this group of uh, accounting people would go to dealers un- unannounced with Field the service tape. representatives. There you go. <laughs> so he obviously knows They're about still it. still there, aren't they? <laughs> the boat cops, we used to call them. That's what they are. They're boat cops. And they come and, along with their, you with know, their clipboard. Now you brought up a very intimate part of our industry. You know, the honest truth is, uh, you know, organizations like ours at our size, we like the boat cops. Yeah. Well, it, 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 it they help us. Like yeah. they're, they're, you know, it's a big organization, a lot of inventory to track. Like they're an aid. Yeah. Uh, smaller dealers, it can be, you know, almost come across as intrusive. It is. Yeah. Because, because it's sometimes, funny. you know, you would be a week or two behind in uh, divulging your sales. And no, all of a sudden, not you and Reno. All of a sudden, no, the boat cop I can't comes up that. and says, huh, where's, uh, where's that boat? Oh, that one. That one, that one, uh, it just went out this morning. Oh, okay. Well, how about that uh, one there? That one, well, there, there's a story behind that boat. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyways. <laughs> it's interesting. Throw, throws me back to the good old days. Anyways, we've kept you long enough, my friend. I uh, always appreciate you coming on the show. Um, let us Love know. being on here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, let us know when something, uh, if something breaks uh, and we haven't called you, you call us. Let us know yeah, that you please. need to come on, so. We appreciate Sounds it. Sounds great, guys. Thanks so much. Thank All you. Right, Steve. Stephen Tate from Maple Leaf Marine. Boy, but I'll tell you. That's a big business. Oh, my God. You, can you imagine how many boats with the 27 brands and 20 locations? No, no I cannot. Oh, I can, I my God. You, it was hard enough just managing one yeah. for us. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, they still sure. have boat cops. That's the best. That's hilarious. They boat were cop. pretty uh, anal. Could you tell as soon as they walked in? Oh, they, they had their little... They would try. They would try to be sort of inconspicuous. Right. That's what I'm saying. They weren't yeah. coming in with you know, suits and yeah. ties. No, yeah. no, no. They were coming... But you could smell them. The minute <laughs> that they would come onto the lot, there was an odor. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's you good. could smell... Somebody the say, oh, cops. there's got to be a fish cop. <laughs> boat cop. Or a boat cop. And sure as hell... Oh, they God. usually were right. And, they yeah, would, uh, well. and of course, the problem with that is that then they fine you. Yeah. And, yeah. and there's all kinds of financial yeah. Oh, yeah. I can imagine. Oh, and my God. It, it used to get ugly. Yeah. But it was part of, part of the business. Small businesses like that. You got yeah. to gotta zig and zag to keep the yeah. uh, balls yeah. always yeah. in the yeah, air yeah, and yeah. juggling, right? Stay alive, yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, was, there's some good points in there, though. We got to, like what Steve was saying, there's a lot of interest. I learned some stuff again today. That's good. I love it. When I, every when we can day, learn. a man has to learn some, and a woman has to learn That's something. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Even a dog. Your dog should learn something. Give me a hell yeah. Comes in out of the rain, you know. They, I, you told me all about the dog story this morning, about your buddy conversing with his dog uh, uh, intimately. <laughs> that are it, folks. Uh, thanks for joining us once again. Uh, as we do and we appreciate everything you do for us every time you tune into this show every time you subscribe every time you leave a review every time you That's do something right. uh, we, we love you we love we you love we appreciate you. it and we see it and don't think it's going uh, unheard give me a hell yeah that and too. you too Dean thank come you on for now pushing those buttons every now come on and, now and by the way I hope you uh, you learned about the um, the uh, starting that boat up in your driveway. Eh? Don't, yeah. Don't go do it. That's that. a big one. I won't be All doing right. that. That's a big one. Right. <laughs> Huge one. All right. Don't forget fishingcan.com, the gateway, the portal to your next fishing adventure is waiting for you with all kinds of goodies, including uh, some giveaways that we happen to have from time to time. Ooh, anything cool on that Dino right now? Is there anything that's, uh, and this is out. I think we'll still have a live scope up there. Live scope plus kit. Nice. Actually that's not a cool. kit, a whole like uh, system. Uh, yeah. Like an open water one. Oh, nice. And, uh, we have a watch nice. up there right now and a, bu- and a bunch of other stuff. Garmin watch. Too. A Garmin Ooh. watch. Yeah. Nice. Woohoo. There you go. go. It's all happening at fishingcanada.com on 
behalf of the entire team, Vova over there behind the camera. Nick was here earlier yeah, on. Yeah, where did he, he go? Oh, he had to go. He had business to attend to. And uh, wouldn't you like to be Nick? When you, yeah, well, when you, yeah, hey, when you go, I, you want to come back as Nick, don't you? I, I got a feeling he's going to get beat up a lot in his life, though. <laughs> I do really. Think. It's like your buddy you met today. <laughs> Nick is oh. going to be that guy there. He's just going to get pounded up a little bit. Uh, so. Dean Taylor, on, uh, our producer, and my co-host Peter Rollman and Angelo Viola. Thanks, folks. Talk to you next time.